All right, the inventory tab is the heart and soul of the workbook, and it's definitely where you'll be spending a lot of time when you first get this workbook in setting up your inventory. But it's very simple and very intuitive, so let's walk through it column by column. Starting here in column A, this is maybe the most important column. This is the SKU field. Now, this field can be any number, letter, or combo you like. I recommend a sequential system just for ease of use and to sort it if you need to find something, but you're certainly free to use whatever system you want. But this SKU number is going to be used when you sell something to pull in the information from the rest of the row. So make sure you make it something that sort of makes sense to you and that when if you're going to put this SKU number into your e-commerce listing, say on Amazon or eBay, something that you can easily put in there as well. Column B is where your item is actually located in your inventory. These are the actual locations of where the item is and you will set these locations up in the location tab which is covered in that video. Column C is the item number. This field lets you enter the item number from an e-commerce platform or really any platform if you wish. It is not required but it's a great place to track that number if you would like to do so. You can enter it here. Column D is the item title. Now this is the actual title that you're giving to your item and I recommend that you use this as the same title for the your listing title as well. That way it'll cut down on confusion. Um, but you're free to put in here whatever title you like. Column E is the quantity. So you're going to enter the number that you have of the exact same item. So for instance if you have 50 of this item right here you would put 50. Now if you want to create different listings and you break that quantity apart then you'll need to create separate rows for each one. But assuming it's the same item you can put the quantity right here. Column F is the location availability. This is really an ingenious part of the workbook in my opinion. After entering the location of the item over here in column B, the, this field will let you know if there is still space available for additional items and it will say available space. So when I entered A112 here, it said available space. When I entered item A or I entered this item in location A111, it said no spots left at the location. When you see that message pop up for the first time, that means there's no more spots left. You are literally filling the last spot. So if you want to list any more items here on this page, you will need to find somewhere else to put them in your inventory. Column G is the cost of goods sold. Now technically, it does not become a cost of goods sold until you sell the item. But for simplicity's sake, we're putting in here the price that you paid for the item. You will need to enter this when you initially list the item. However, you could, for instance, let's say you bought five $2 items, you could just put five $2, you could just copy $2 here five times and then fill out your listings. That's sort of a quicker way to get around that. But ultimately, this is what you paid for the item. And you're gonna need this on the back end for accounting purposes and so on when you actually sell the item. Column H is the list date, just what it says. It's the date that you actually listed the item for sale. Um, if you take away this date, it will not calculate correctly how long that item was for sale. So probably a good idea to put this in, when, in there correctly. You can see like I have a fake date here to try to trick the system and it will let you put it in, but you need to make sure that you need to act, it's the correct date at all times if you want the spreadsheet to calculate correctly. Column I is not listed. It's the listing month. It's a calculated column that it pulls from this column right here, so it's not really necessary for this example. Column J is the platform that you're selling the item on, and it's just what it says. Amazon, Craigslist, eBay, Amazon, Craigslist, and so on. So this will help you keep track of your sales by platform. These three columns, columns K through M, are user-defined columns. You can put any information in here you want that's not covered in one of these other columns if you want to put something additional about your item. It's really literally up to you. You'll be able to sort on those columns using this filter. You'll be able to see what the information is. So that's totally up to you if you want to use those. Column O and over is a form. Now this form is for 
an optional way to enter inventory for Windows users. You will need to fill you will need to follow these directions right here. And if you follow these directions, you'll be able to get this form to pop up for each inventory item. It's essentially the same thing as what you're entering over here in the columns, but it's popping it up in a nice form. You can find other ones and so on. It gives you a little more functionality. Unfortunately, this is not available for Mac users due to visual basic conflicts and some scripting issues and so on. But if you're a Windows user and you want to use this, follow these instructions and you can have the form pop up and you can use it. So that's the inventory tab. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below this video and I or someone else who sees this video will do our best to answer them and get your question answered and get you back on the road to listing your inventory correctly. Hope that was helpful. Thanks.